The following story was told by Paolo, a writer and mental health advocate from Mental Health Connecticut's Right On program. This story is raw, personal, and may contain language not suitable for younger listeners. I'm Paolo, and I'd like to speak with you. But first, I must speak in silence. My name is Paolo. The name your breakup text told you was wrong, drawing a thin red line underneath me. The name you never used. It is all it takes on moments that linger to be utterly destroyed by a machine. I cannot write my name without an artifice jumping in to rearrange, add, and subtract until I am standing in front of a mirror unrecognizable for all the work done to me. What would the sensation be, I wonder, to fold, to be in the active process of enveloping the static object Embracing it, steely arms wrinkling in panicked delight. A stoppable force meeting a movable object. My love for the instant so intense, I long for this romance at full speed, barreling into, caressing tenderly. Were you to observe, ideally with a high-speed camera, you would certainly find each instant to be filled with a decade of long kisses and moonlit nights. Would my heart be pierced by flying fenders, propelled from the mere mention of our meeting? Or would my heart crumple as I jerk forward, my desire moving, my raw will incapable of holding you? We are left behind, coughing in exhaust. Rewind the tape. There. Did you see it? Play it back. You missed it again, goddammit. Rewind, rewind. Stop, stop, stop. Okay. Play at a quarter speed. There, there. Watch how he does this. It's masterful. A slow five pounds on the accelerator and the cop won't notice. The cop can't notice. He, she, won't be the death of me. Another five on the accelerator and I am cruising. When I meet you at last, darling, everything will happen so fast. My voiceless friends condemn this reckless pace. You're telling me that flying straight towards my fate is a mistake? These friends invoke gods and reason, yet here we are flying. On my way, I say to the artificial friend, let the silence know I am on my way. The eyes of that little dog I will be seeing have no boundaries. They disappear into the rest of her. My body restrained, my heart emerges from my chest. Gently it peels away, removing layer by layer until it is floating out through, utterly painlessly passing. Scarlet, serene. Thin red lines halt the progress, blurring before me, orbiting, unfolding. After patience, the void collides into itself while I am gripping the controls, pupils eclipsed, I epiphanize. My flesh is the heavy machinery, my medications tell me not to operate. I don't get it. What was masterful about that? He's just moving. Julia told me that I sway when I speak. She may have even used a word, abbreviation, misnomer, swayer. (laughs) What Julia missed is that I am not swaying, I'm dancing, obviously. Kneeling on the floor, I'm playing the air guitar next to my brother, and I'm showing off for my girlfriend. Sometimes people smile at me. She would smile at me, and for that moment, I knew what it was like to love myself. She never really danced with me. The best time to dance is 10.38 on a Thursday night while we do the dishes. I've decided to use we in that context so that you feel welcome to join me as I slide around the hardwood floors in my torn up socks, a 
which I've often caught on the odd nails I do just this thing. It's a delightful relief from scrubbing to feel pulled away by the drums and spun around with a guitar lick. I think I've gone to one or two real parties in my life, parties with youth and peers. One was a birthday party, someone's sweet 16. I think I was assumed as gay because of how excellent a dancer I was. <laughs> <laughs> That's the kinder version of that story. The ignorant version is that I was mistaken as gay because I was willing to dance with men which is to say I was willing to dance alone. I like to dance in the car too, but that's hard when you're driving. I never dance in the car when I'm not driving. For some reason, holding the wheel means I feel like the car is dancing with me, and I know what my brain feels like, steering me around. That organ has been having a wild time lately. No one else in my house dances. My mom and dad sit and listen. My brother sits and listens. My sister made me invisible so she can sit and listen. So invisible, I dance alone. Thank you. This story was recorded in front of a live audience at CT Improv's Theater in Hartford, Connecticut. Want to hear more young adults find their voice and speak their truth? Go to mhconn.org slash write on. That's W-R-I-T-E-O-N.